This training topic covers how to demonstrate user registration on the Filer Portal. For the setup, start with the Filer Portal home screen, which you see here. Be sure there is no user currently logged in. And you can have the main screen set to select jurisdiction, as you see here. This will show all the jurisdictions where TurboCord is currently available. Or you can choose to have a particular jurisdiction already selected, which will then show the variety of case type applications that are available for that particular jurisdiction. So that's the setup for this. And now I'll begin the actual demonstration that I will give to a prospective court or agency. So filers need to first register in order to use TurboCourt, and registration is very fast and easy. Only a name and email address are required. And to register, the filer will simply click the register link, and this brings up the registration process. And the filer needs to provide their name, and email address, those are the only two personal fields that are required. An email address must be unique. That is, you cannot use an email address for registering that has already been used. Uh, as you can see, contact phone doesn't have an asterisk, so it is not a required field. And the next item that the user will indicate is how they want to be notified regarding the status of their electronic filings. When a filing is electronically delivered, messages are automatically sent back to the filer regarding the status of that filing. For example, when the filing is first delivered, a notification tells the filer that the court or agency received the filing and the filer will be notified once it's been processed. This helps alleviate the filer calling you to ask you if you received the filing, saving staff time. There are two kinds of TurboCourt notifications. One is an internal notification that is always on. This means the filer can log into TurboCourt anytime from anywhere and check to see what notifications they've received regarding any of their electronic filings. So this is always available to them. The other type of notification is email notification, and this is optional. So this next area is where the user indicates what default setting they want to choose with regards to email notification. And there are three choices. The first choice is to receive email notification, but with only a link to TurboCourt, with no details about the filing in the email itself. This type of email notification will tell the filer there's an update to their form set number 1234, for example, but will not provide any other details. It simply tells them to log in and check the status of that form set. This is typically used when the filer does want to be notified by email, but doesn't want others to know the nature of their filings. For example, they are maybe filing for divorce, and they may not want anyone else who might see their email to know what the email is about. Now, the second choice for email notification is to receive that email notification with a link to TurboCourt, just as in the previous choice, but to include details about their filing. So in this situation, for example, if it's a notification that their filing has been accepted, the email might also contain information such as a case number, a hearing date and time, and other pertinent information about the filing and or that case. And then their third choice is to indicate that they don't want to receive emails at all, in which case they'll just log in regularly to TurboCore to check on the status of their filing. And as you can see with this important note just below here, even if the filer does choose to receive email notification, we explain that because email delivery can never be guaranteed, they must still log into TurboCourt regularly to check the status of their filing. The next selection is for the filer to indicate which type of user they want to register as, and there are currently five choices. If they cl click on the link, which user type should I select? The window comes up and describes each of the user types that they can read and then use that to help them make the proper choice. So if they were to select individual, for example, and then click next, it will take them to step two in the registration process. Uh, here they need to provide a username and password based on the characteristics that you see here. They also will need to select a security question and provide a corresponding answer to that question. And this they can use to automatically recover their password or username if they forget it. Uh, that again is very helpful in saving staff time not having to deal with those sorts of support calls. And once that is set up, they would then click on the link for the user agreement 
read through the user agreement and check the checkbox that they agree to the terms and conditions click register and now once they're registered with TurboCourt they can use it anywhere TurboCourt is available so this is if I were to register as an individual but let's go back and say that I need to register as a business so I go through the same process and the only thing that's different here is that I now have an additional field a business name field which is required if I were to register as an attorney or law firm have a similar process now it's a law firm name that's required there's also an optional attorney state bar number field so you can see no asterisk so that's optional but if they do fill this in then the corresponding state field does become required that goes along with what state their bar number is for and then they proceed accordingly and if I were to select either of the government agency user types I follow a similar process so that's how the user registers with TurboCourt it's quite simple